closet. We so appreciate you being so flexible and making this a reality and making it happen. Um, we also just want to thank all the teachers and all the students for being so great about all the changes that we've had to make to make today possible. So thanks so much. Um, we are so excited and so privileged to have the author Chad Sell with us today. And he is here ready to talk to us about being an author and all of the other wonderful things that he has to share. So let's go ahead and give our attention to Chad Sell. Take it away. Hi there, thanks so much for having me. I wish I could have visited your school in person, but I'm so glad that we were able to make this virtual event happen. Um, I'm gonna give a little slideshow about my work, how I make it, and what I hope all of you get out of it if you read it. Um, and then I'm going to do a little bit of drawing demonstration. I'll do a draw along where I'll show step-by-step -step how to draw some of my characters. So if you have pieces of paper and pencils or markers, you can draw along with me. And then there'll be some time for questions and answers at the end. So hopefully there'll be time for everything. Um, I'm gonna share my screen and um, share some slides with you. So these are my two book series that I've done so far for kids age eight to 12. Um, I have uh, always loved comic books. I grew up reading comics, watching cartoons. And early on when I was a kid, I started making comics too. And I hope that a lot of you like comics, graphic novels, manga, cartoons. And I hope that a lot of you like drawing and doodling and maybe even making your own comics too. Um, when I'm coming up with a character, uh, I like to start with something as simple as a smiley face. I think that what, you know, cartooning is not meant to be super realistic, super detailed. What I love about cartooning is that it's simplified from reality and that with just a smiley face, you can bring a character to life. Starting with a smiley face, what, one of the things that I think is most useful to, for bringing a character to life and showing their expressions are eyebrows. And that might seem really silly, but watch how dramatically different this character's expression is if I change their eyebrows. This character feels something very different than he does here, right? You can play around, watch, watch your friends and your family, how they express themselves with their eyebrows. Um, the eyebrows can make you look mad, they can make you look happy, they can make you look inquisitive, right? And then you can change the eyebrows, the eyes, and the mouth to find all kinds of different expressions and emotions. And with just a few lines and dots, you can really bring a character to life, right? Oops, sorry, I sped through those. Um, <laughs> so starting with a smiley face, that's a great place to start. If you're trying to create different characters with different looks and feels, um, you might try mixing around with the proportions or the spacing of the features. You might draw a character with their eyes really close together. And how does that character feel different from an, a character whose eyes are really far apart? Maybe you have a character whose eyes are crooked or maybe you have a character with big cartoony expressive eyes like that. You can try swapping those out for cat eyes or maybe three eyes. What I love about drawing and cartooning is that because it's so simple, it's so quick, you can just experiment and you can doodle and you, you might not even realize what you're drawing and your own drawing can surprise you. Those are some of my favorite moments as an artist when your own creativity surprises you and a character comes to life without you even realizing who it is yet. Um, so, so, one, you know, so you might notice <laughs> in this smiley face, one crucial part of the face is missing, and that is the nose. I think that noses can be kind of complicated to draw, um, and they don't show a lot of expression, but they do give a lot of character, right? So this is sort of a big, big giant nose, you might give a character a simple pointy nose, or you might give your character a cat nose. By swapping out those different features, you might get different ideas for what that character might look like, and you might build out what the rest of that character would be. So this is a big buff cat character. I think the pointy nose guy might be more like a goblin. And then the big nose might be more like a gentle giant. And just by swapping out different characters, different features, different expressions, 
you can really mix and match and come up with all kinds of goofy characters. And that's how um, I came up with a lot of the characters in my books. Some characters you draw now as kids, you might be drawing all your life. One of the oldest characters I've been drawing since I was a kid is this character Panja. And he started out as just a simple panda character. And then as I kept drawing him over the years, he became like a ninja, a hero. He had all these muscles. And then over the years and years and years, I drew him in a million different styles. Sometimes he was more human. Um, sometimes he was more cartoony and little and cute. And eventually I settled on this little guy. I thought maybe he's just best not being a ninja, just being a cute little guy. And it felt like as I drew Panja over the years that he kind of grew with me. As my interests changed, he changed. Um, and he sort of was like a, a figure living in my head and on my page. And it was that idea of um, drawing characters over many years and kind of having them live and grow alongside you that inspired my book, Doodleville. And what, one fun thing that I was able to do with Doodleville is I incorporated some characters that I had been drawing for many years, including Panja. He's one of the doodles in Doodleville. In Doodleville, the idea is that when you draw a character and bring them to life, they actually do come to life. They move, they go across the wall or your sketchbook and they can get up to trouble. And um, these are all the doodles of the main character, Drew. And she's been drawing them her whole life and they're basically her best friends. She's even drawn them a whole city called Doodleville on her bedroom wall. Drew um, has art artist friends. She has an art club at school and she brings in her um, doodles and stuff to show, share with them. And one day in Doodleville, she's drawn her biggest, most complicated doodle ever. His name is Levi the Leviathan. And she is super excited to show him off to her friends. But unfortunately, her teacher and her friends, when they see Levi the Leviathan, they're not sure what he's supposed to be. They don't know what a Leviathan is. They don't know if he's supposed to be a scary monster because he looks kind of goofy and silly. And so Drew feels really bummed out. I don't know if any of you have ever drawn something and it doesn't look like you wanted it to, or people don't think it is what it's supposed to be. And you can feel like you're not a good artist, that it was a mistake to draw them in the first place, or maybe you should never draw again. I feel like that all the time. And that's how Drew feels about Levi the Leviathan. She thinks he was a mistake. And so she tries to cross him out, like she never should have drawn him in the first place. But all those bad feelings of not being good enough um, and feeling like he was a mistake, turn him into a monster. And all those bad negative feelings feed him and make him bigger and badder until he threatens everything she's ever drawn. And so in Doodleville, all of Drew's insecurities and worries become a problem that's way too big for her to handle on her own. But her art club friends are all talented artists too. They have their own interests and their own ideas and their own doodle characters. And they ultimately will team up with Drew and her doodles to defeat the dark Leviathan. I thought it was really important to show the highs and the lows of creativity in Doodleville, that sometimes when your own problems feel too big for you to handle, that sometimes you can rely on your friends to inspire you and come up with clever ideas to solve your problems. And that idea was inspired by the process of making my first book, which was The Cardboard Kingdom. I had been trying for years and years to get a book published and I just wasn't having any luck on my own. And I started to worry that it was just too big of a job for me to handle on my own. And so a crucial part of making Cardboard Kingdom was me realizing that I didn't have to do it on my own. My idea for Cardboard Kingdom was that it would follow a whole bunch of different kids who all live in the same neighborhood and each have their own stories, but they all play together. And I just wasn't sure who all those kids would be, what their stories would be. And so I found 10 different writers who each wrote a, a chapter in the book and helped me write the book and, and get it published. And that was a really amazing process, us all, bouncing ideas around with each other and building on each other's stories and characters, using each other's characters and each other's stories. And it was through working with all of them that I developed the confidence to write books on my own or to keep making books with other collaborators. Cardboard Kingdom is all about transforming yourself with your creativity. 
It's each kid makes their own character out of, and costume out of cardboard and stuff they have around the house. And each of them is kind of working through different things in their fantasy and in their imagination. There's like Jack the Sorceress, Amanda the Mad Scientist, and Connie the Robot. They're all, you know, one wants to be more glamorous than they are in everyday life. One wants to be smarter than they are in everyday life. And Connie the Robot wants to be more terrifying than she is in everyday life. I like showing all the different ways that you can use creativity to transform yourself and transform how other people see you. But no matter what, like even though there are good kids and bad kids and heroes and villains, they all team up, they all play together constructively, and they all hang out together at the Dragon's Head Inn. Now, I picked cardboard for the Cardboard Kingdom because cardboard is something you just have lying around your house. It's not something you buy. It's not some fancy material. Um, it's something you would probably just recycle or throw out. Um, I like the idea that creativity allows you to transform everyday materials around you into something you never would have imagined. And the very most exciting thing of being an author is to see actual kids make their own cardboard costumes, come up with their own characters. I think it's super awesome. Um, I, what I like about cardboard is that you can turn it into pretty much anything, but it's never gonna look perfect because it's gonna have tape on it, it's gonna have wrinkles in it, and it won't even last that long. But it's just the act of making stuff that I think is so exciting and sharing your creativity with other, with other people. That idea of um, doing the best you can with what you've got also inspired my next series, which I'll give you a little sneak peek of. It's called The Stupendous Switcheroo, and it is a superhero so story. It is a very silly superhero story. In the book, at the very start of it, Switcheroo wakes up and his bunny slippers are floating above his head. And he's like, what is wrong with my slippers? But he realizes that it's him doing it, that he woke up with superpowers and he can move his thing, anything with his mind. But then the crazy thing is that, is that the very next day he wakes up with a different power. And some days he wakes up with amazing powers like being able to fly. Other days he wakes up with something kind of pointless like shooting bubbles out of his hands. Other days he wakes up with a scary power that turns him into a giant monster. But no matter what, Switch tries to be creative and figure out how to do the best he can with what he's got. He doesn't know how he'll wake up in the morning, what he'll be able to do, but he'll find some way to do good in the world and to help his friends. Um, so that's, you know, in summary, all of my books are kind of about that idea that you can start really simple, that you can have fun, that you can use simple materials, um, whatever you've got to make something amazing. And that it's perfectly natural to feel like what you're making isn't good enough or isn't as good as your friends, but you should never let that keep you um, from making stuff or from spoiling the fun of creativity. And of course, you always have friends and family to inspire you and to work with you and to encourage you through those tough times because we all have doubts and insecurities about not being good enough. So that's what I hope you get out of my books. Um, and I hope you feel super inspired. I'd like to show just a little sneak peek at how I make my books um, because hopefully you can pick up some tips and tricks. And then of course I'll draw with you in a few minutes. So I work totally digitally on a computer at home. Um, I have a cat named Ivy who likes to visit me a lot and bark at me and demand breaks. Um, each of my books takes about a year to draw and to write, um, but each of the books um, I've been thinking about a lot longer. I, sometimes, you know, just like with Panja and with all my doodles, certain, you, 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 I find myself thinking about characters, daydreaming about stories for many years as I figure out what the book is really about. What do I want to say with those characters and with their stories? And also, I love video games and cooking as hobbies. Um, feel free to ask me my favorite video games. Um, so I like to show a little bit of the step-by-step -step process of making my books, because even though this is like the final page from Cardboard Kingdom of the Big Banshee story, and it might look complicated with all that color, with all the word balloons and everything, I like to show that just like the smiley face, I like to start super simple. This is like the first step of drawing in, in pretty much any page I draw, where I draw messy, I draw over and over again and erase things and move things around, 
And I'm just, you know, drawing expressions, smiley faces, just drawing the loose idea of like how everything will even fit on the page and what each character's pose will be. And I don't worry about getting things right. I don't worry about getting things detailed. I am just figuring out what I need to do to tell the story. And then just gradually step by step, I fix things, I adjust things. Um, these are called like the pencils when you're kind of sketching everything out. And then I do the final lines for the art called the inks. And then I just add in some flat colors. And then I add in a little bit of shading to get, give everything some depth. And that's the final um, page in the book. So that's the end of my slideshow. Um, I, I'm super excited that there are readers like you reading my books. I feel so lucky. Um, and I, I'm super excited because if you like my books, I have two books coming out this year. The Stupendous Switcheroo um, is a brand new series that will be starting in September. And then books two and three will follow soon after that. And then um, I'm excited to tell you that I'll have a third Cardboard Kingdom book coming out later this year in November. And it's called Snow and Sorcery. And it takes place uh, over winter in the Cardboard Kingdom. So um, you guys will be getting a bunch of snow today. And as you play in the snow and have fun in it, think about the Cardboard Kingdom kids and how much fun that story will be. So let's see, that is the end of my slideshow. Um, I'm going to switch over to my drawing program. And um, if you have drawing materials ready, you can draw along with me. So let's see. Okay, so you should be seeing um, my drawing program. This is where I do all of my books and all my drawing. And I'm gonna show you step-by-step um, step how to draw some of my characters. Um, I'm going to start with some of the doodles from Doodleville because I designed them to be really fun and simple to draw. So I think that they're the most fun to draw with, with kids like you. So with this character, I'm going to draw, I'm going to start with a C. And then I'm going to draw a reverse C. These are going to be eyes. It's totally okay if your drawing looks a little different than mine. There's no right or wrong way for these characters to look. So I'm gonna fill in circles around this character's two eyes. And then I'm going to give a little smiley face. And you might've already figured out, I'm showing you how to draw Panja, that silly doodle from Doodleville. So he has a round head. Sometimes with like big circle shapes, I'll draw parts of it as I'm figuring out how it all fits together. And you can kind of redraw lines a little bit until it looks right. So that's his head. Panja has simple little circles for ears on each side of his head. And with a lot of the doodles in Doodleville, like I said, I tried to keep them really simple and fun to draw. One of the things that's most complicated for young artists to draw are hands and feet. And so with a lot of the doodles, I don't really worry about that stuff. This is how I draw Panja's hand, uh, arms. And then this is how I draw his feet. Really simple, really fun. Um, you know, I, I really tried to sort of distill every character into as simple and essential um, of, a, of a version of themselves as I could make them. So of course, Panja is a panda and they have black and white on their bodies. To, to figure that stuff out, I'll draw one line from one arm to another, curve it up like a rainbow, and then a similar line over each leg. And then I will fill in his arms. and I will fill in his legs. And that's Panja, simple as can be, right? Um, you know, I think sometimes when you're doodling or you're drawing a character for a comic or a story, you might draw lots of complicated detail, a complicated costume. Um, you might, you know, try to make them look as rich and detailed as you can. But then if you're gonna try to do a whole comic book story with them, um, you're really setting yourself up for a lot of work 
and a lot of challenge. But if you draw a really simple, fun character that's that you like drawing over and over again, then it's going to be a lot of fun to do a whole comic strip with them because drawing them's a blast. So that's what I try to keep in mind with Doodleville, but sometimes I make my characters too complicated too. So one of my other favorite doodles to draw is Alex the alien. So I start with a circle and then a second circle, a third circle, and even a fourth circle, if you believe it or not. These are Alex's eyes. Like I said, he is an alien, so he can have as many eyes as I want. And you can make his eyes looking the same direction or all different directions. I often like to do that because I think it looks more fun. Alex is a pretty chill, carefree alien. So I'm gonna give him just a little mouth that looks kind of like a, a sliver of a moon. And just like with Panja, I'm gonna keep his arms and legs really simple. I draw one line down from each side of his eyes and then one arm and another arm and then one leg and another leg. And Alex the alien likes to dance around. So I like to often draw him little wiggly lines with that. Now, I think I only have a few more minutes before we should get to questions and answers. So one of my favorite characters to draw from Doodleville is Levi the Leviathan. Now leave a lot of room on your paper for Levi the Leviathan because he is big. So with him, I start with one eye and an eyebrow. You know, I love eyebrows. And I'll draw, this is gonna be a snout. So this, I draw a big line like this. And then his big teeth, he has three triangle teeth. One, two, three. And then the bottom jaw will have like the same shapes. One triangle, two triangle, three, and then they connect. And now, because he's a big like Leviathan, which is kind of like a sea serpent, he has one fin, a second fin, and then the rest is whatever you want to do to draw his big serpent shape. And kind of like a snake or a serpent, he has like a line running down the middle. And I just do fun zigzag lines to show like the scales of his underbelly. And that's Levi the Leviathan. In Doodleville, he loves giving rides to his other doodles. They like to ride on his back. So you can draw your own doodles or doodles from the book riding on his back if you'd like. And with those doodles, um, you know, like I said, I try to really mix and match and just kind of play with fun shapes and, and character designs. So I hope that gives you ideas of like how you can create your own characters and like, you know, all animals or aliens or monsters or creatures. Um, I hope that you feel like you can do whatever you want to do. Um, so those are the doodle characters. Now, when I'm drawing a human character from Cardboard Kingdom, they're a little bit more complicated. And so when I'm drawing something a little bit more complicated, I'll often start with light sketchy lines as I figure everything out. So here I will draw Jack the Sorcerer, so, oh, sorry, Jack the Sorceress. I'll often start with the two eyes, a simple nose and a smiley face. And then I'll try to figure out like, where's their head gonna be, their chin, I also find drawing in the ears really simply is really helpful for me just to figure out everything. And then when I'm drawing the Cardboard Kingdom kids, I typically draw the kid first and then like their hair. So they look bald for a while. And then I draw their costume. So with Jack the Sorceress, the headdress that, that they wear is a little bit tricky. I draw a line down the middle and then it kind of comes up like a triangle and same down here. It comes down along the side of Jack's face and then up from the corners. And it's okay if you're drawing like really simple and sketchy because 
it, you have to figure it all out and all these angles are pretty complicated. I'll draw a line up here and a line up here. And then I'll connect these down here and maybe I'll erase that. So that's like the sketch. And then I would go in with a little bit more confidence now that I figured everything out. I'll draw in the eyes. I'll draw the nose. I'll draw a smiley face. Jack the sorceress is um, in the army of evil. So she's always planning something mischievous. So I often like to give um, sinister scheming eyebrows. And you see, I'm just sort of um, drawing over that sketch. I've figured everything out with the sketch. So I feel pretty confident drawing pretty quickly when I'm doing this portion, which most cartoonists would call the inking portion of making the book. And so working digitally, I had that sketch and I had the final lines that I did here and I can make the sketch go away. Um, and even I could um, even do like shading if I wanted to, but we're running a little low on time. So I don't want to take up too much time with that. Um, but yeah, this is how I do my books. Um, and if you have any questions about all of this, uh, I think that we have plenty of time for questions and um, I'll, I'll turn off my screen sharing. And um, Ms. Johnson, I think had some prepared questions. And I think that you students, some of you students might have a chance to ask your questions. Yes, thank you so much, Chad. We loved learning how to draw and hearing all about your journey as an author and creating your book. So thank you so much. We have a few questions ready for you. Okay. First we have Jake. What are your future plans to write more books? Oh, what are my future plans to write more books? Um, well, I'm super excited that I have those other books coming out, like I mentioned, The Stupendous Switcheroo. So that'll be a whole new series with lots of books, uh, lots of books in the series. Uh, and then there's the third Cardboard Kingdom book. Um, and then after that, I'm not sure. Um, it's exciting to, you know, I have lots of story ideas in my head. Um, in my head, but I'm not exactly sure what the next books after that will be. Thank you. Thanks for your question. Vivian. What, Hi is, there. It, what is it like being an author? Um, it is super fun because I get to get awesome questions from kids like you and to talk with you and draw with kids like you. I think it's super exciting. Um, it can be kind of quiet when I'm busy writing and drawing a book at home, but it's great when I have Cool collaborators to work with. And so working on something like Cardboard Kingdom is really fun because I get to work with 10 different people on it. And sometimes you get sick of your own ideas, but you get to hear other people's ideas and that gets you excited about things again. So that's Thank what it's you. like. Thank you for your question. Kenzie. Did you create Cardboard Kingdoms when you were younger? If yes, what was your favorite brand of cardboard to use? Oh, that's a great question. So, um, I grew up in Wisconsin, I, I was born in Michigan, and um, I played with my friends like in each other's backyards a lot. I you know, lived next door to a lot of my best friends growing up. Um, so we would like make up adventures and play together and stuff. I don't think that we actually made stuff out of cardboard that much as kids. Um, so I didn't do a ton of cardboard creation when I was a kid, but since working on Cardboard Kingdom, I've played around with a lot of cardboard and stuff. I think a lot of different cardboard is good to use. I think the tricky thing about working with cardboard is how to cut it because it's kind of thick and a lot of younger kids like aren't really allowed to use super sharp materials. So I think having an adult help cut out the shapes is really useful. And then there are also these cool little cardboard saws that you can cut into cardboard really well with. Um, so I don't have a specific brand of cardboard to suggest. I think it's great to use whatever you have on hand. Thanks so much for your question. This is Zach. What Hello. struggles did you have while, write, while writing or drawing your book? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear a few words at the start of that. Can you repeat that? What struggles did you have while writing or drawing your book? Oh, gosh. Well, I mean, I, I think I talked a little bit about that, um, that, you know, sometimes you can run out of ideas on your own. 
And so with Cardboard Kingdom, working with so many different people really helped me get a fresh perspective. Even some of the characters that I brought to the book, like Jack the Sorceress, other people helped me get new ideas for those characters. Um, so that was really exciting. And with Doodleville, um, you know, there were times when I was like, oh no, I, I can't do this book on my own or I'm not good enough. Um, will anyone like this? <laughs> Does anything make sense? Um, I struggle with that all the time. And I like to, you know, be open about that because I'm sure all young artists struggle with feeling not good enough or not being sure if their story ideas make sense. Um, so I hope that all of you understand that it's just a natural part of the process and end up getting better at what you do. So thanks so much for your question. You're welcome. Here's Ava. Um, at what point did you decide you wanted to be an author? Um, that's a great question. Um, you know, I have loved comics and, and writing comics since I was a kid, but I wasn't always sure that that would be my job or if it could be my job. Um, I think that, that there are all kinds of ways to be creative, even if you don't do it to make a living. Um, but, um, you know, ever since, you know, high school and college, I just always liked comics and I liked that you can do so much with so little, that you can do it all on your own or with just a few friends. Um, so it's been, it's been a long time that I've wanted to make comics, but it took me a long time to finally get books published. Um, so thanks so much for your question. Here's Allie. How did you get inspired to make your books? How did I get inspired? Um, I think that there's a lot of, like, I think a lot of my favorite memories of childhood are what inspired my books. The idea that your imagination and your creativity can basically do anything you want. Make whole make-believe worlds, make costumes, make amazing characters and stories. That stuff is super exciting to me. And it's all of that that I wanted to capture in my books to capture my favorite memories from my childhood and inspire kids like you to be creative and in, in your own ways. Does that make sense? Thanks so much. Thank you. Here's Victor. Would you say that you have a good imagination? Does this help you as an author? Um, yeah, I think, I think my imagination is almost too active. I love daydreaming. I love imagining story ideas and what my character would do in different situations. Um, sometimes I would rather daydream than worry about doing my chores or cleaning up or doing other stuff around the house. Um, Sounds like me. Yeah, yeah. So I think, I think maybe your family or your friends might get frustrated if you're daydreaming all the time, but I think that's a really great mindset to have as an author because you're always coming up with new ideas. Thank you. You bet. Thanks for the question. Here's Evelyn. What is your favorite book you've written and favorite book you've read? Oh my gosh, those are good questions. Um, uh, I, I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> Um, you know, I think Cardboard Kingdom was like a really amazing experience. It was my first book and working with such a big team. So I think that was like a really awesome experience in terms of making a book. Um, in terms of a book that I've read, um, gosh, uh, that's a really hard question to answer. I'm reading collections of Calvin and Hobbes, which was an old newspaper strip. And I'm really loving that um, right now. Um, it was from the 90s, but it was such an amazing comic strip and full of imagination. So I guess that's my best answer for, for right now. Thank I you like so much. Jobs. Oh, that's great. I'm so glad that you're familiar with that. All right, here's Jake. Um, do you think pineapple belongs on pizza? <laughs> um, I think it absolutely has a place on pizza. I wouldn't want it on it on every pizza, but I love having it as an option. I love fruit and sweet stuff on on dinner. I think that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, one last question. Here's Lauren. Um, what is your favorite video game? Oh gosh. Um, I would say probably Zelda Breath of the Wild on the Nintendo Switch. Um, such a cool game. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. It was yeah. so great to meet you and hear from you. And thanks for answering all of those questions. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm so glad I was able to meet all of your students and 
talk a little bit and hopefully share some cool cartooning tips. Yes, I think I can say for us all, we're very excited now and very inspired. So thank you for being part of our day. Yay, thank you so much. Have a great thank day. Thank you, and you as well. You know. Yes, thank you so much. Awesome, thank you. Bye everyone. Bye, thank you.